Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we're gonna talk about the upcoming New York Pro 2024. The lineup is stacked. At this point we have so many great bodybuilders who are doing this show, who are committed to it. We have some great bodybuilders who might do it, and basically every couple of days we hear about the new bodybuilder expressing interest in doing this show. So we know that the lineup here is gonna be crazy, it's gonna be extremely competitive and hard for anybody here to take the win home. But, but, but. We all know, the heaviest of heavy hitters here is, of course, Nick Walker. Now, we are not talking about this version of Nick Walker, 2022 Mr. Olympia, where he looked bonkers, as you can see, and he took third place. No, it is not gonna be the most shredded version of Nick Walker from Arnold Classic 2023. And also, no, it's not gonna be what could have been at the 2023 Mr. Olympia, because we got some photos and it looked really freaking impressive, but this, guys, this was taken like six months ago. So the next Nick Walker version we see is gonna be different. The closest thing we got to what he might look at a New York Pro is the guest posing he did after the Mr. Olympia one month after the Mr. Olympia, and even here, he looked so much improved from his previous version on stage. His legs were definitely bigger, more proportionate to his upper body, and at this point, he wasn't even training them for like more than a month, a month and a half, because of his hamstring injury, of course, but even considering that, his legs definitely did seem improved, and again, this was like five months ago. So we can be sure he is going to be better than this, even better than this, and if that is the case, can anybody really beat him? Well, it's not likely, I think anybody would put their money on Nick Walker, but sometimes things don't go the way we expect. A perfect example would be the 2022 Mr. Olympia, where everybody, literally everybody, thought it's not gonna be even funny, it's not even a competition, Big Ramy is gonna win, and Big Remy ended up in 5th, and Hari Japan won. By the way, take a look at this photo, it's a really awesome photo, 4 Mr. Olympias in one shot. Anyways, things happen, we can never be 100%, yeah, the odds are heavily in Nick's favor, but there are a couple of guys who could give Nick a run for his money. So let's start with this guy, let's cross him off the list right away, because we are not sure if he is even doing the New York Pro, but based on what Ian Valier said in the most recent Food Rabbit podcast, he knows Matt Jensen, he knows what Matt Jensen is thinking like, and he believes that Quinton is gonna do the New York Pro just to test the waters. His show he wants to win is Toronto Pro, I believe, because this is exactly where he lives. He lives in Toronto, it's ideal for him. He doesn't have to fly, he doesn't have to drive, he can just be home, be relaxed and go to the show and look his best. So that's probably the show he's aiming for. Before Toronto, we have New York Pro. And as Ian says, and it makes sense, Matt will probably want to try a peak week with uh, Quinton to see how he's responding, because this is their first prep together before he was prepped by Dorian Hamilton. Also, Matt would probably like to see how Quinton stacks up against the other top guys, especially a top three guy like Nick Walker. So New York Pro makes a lot of sense for Quinton Araya. Now, as far as him winning the show, it's kind of hard to imagine because I'm visualizing his previous version, his 2022 Tampa Pro version, where he was definitely much smaller than right now. If he looks anything like this on stage, there is no chance of him cracking the top three. But Quinton had two years between these two shows, so he definitely made a ton of progress. He literally looks like a new bodybuilder, we'll see how this new muscle is gonna look on stage, where his conditioning is gonna be, is he gonna have the muscle maturity, all that stuff, but, you know, at this point, I mean, this guy is definitely a wild card, anything is possible, really. Alright, now let's talk about Tonio Burton, who is definitely doing this show, who is very, very complete, muscularity-wise, like, he has a great back, he has... Pretty much every single body part, they call him the new Dexter Jackson. He is also known for his conditioning, he's always pretty much on, but... And he is the defending champion, he won the New York Pro this year, he almost won the Iron Classic Brazil, a lot of people feel like he deserved it. But the thing with Tonio is, even though his structure is pretty much flawless, and his conditioning is always spot on, and he's very complete with that crazy back, he's only weighing like 220, while Nick is like 260. 
Antonio was already very much on at a Mr. Olympia last year and he still couldn't place higher than 8th. So as long as Nick is on, and Nick is pretty much always on, as long as that is the case, I don't think Tonio can beat him. The only way Tonio can beat Nick is if Nick is off and Tonio is in his usual conditioning. Honestly, I would rather give the advantage to Martin Fitzwater, who is a little bit bigger than Tonio, a little bit heavier, with probably the same height, and as far as conditioning, he was close to what Tonio is bringing, also very conditioned, maybe not as sharp, as dry, but close, also with a great back, and the thing is, Martin didn't lose a show this year, everything he did, he won, even though it wasn't much, it was one show, and his only competition really was Guduito, still, still, I think this guy is definitely more of a wild card than Tonio Burton, because... He, I think he's gonna get even more conditioned, I think he has enough time to improve, to get even more conditioned, to figure out the peak week with his new coach, Stefan Kinzel, and if he comes in improved and better, and I think he's like 240, I mean, this guy, I think this guy is right after Nick, if everybody is at their 100%, I think this guy plays a second, but again, if Nick comes in a little bit off, he is the guy who is probably gonna give the most trouble to Nick. I think these two guys used to battle against each other in their amateur days, when they were competing and trying to earn a pro card, and now, finally, they're back on stage together, much, much bigger, much, much improved. Obviously, Nick has an advantage, but Martin is coming strong as well, that's for sure. Another interesting, very interesting entry is Beef Stew, who was second last year to Tony O'Burton, who was super devoted in his offseason, and who seems to have grown a lot of tissue in this offseason, and I think he's coming the most shredded he has ever been, because that's the way it looks right now. This guy is also very big, very heavy, I think he's like in his 250s or 260 even, so he's a massive guy, and not the tallest, but you know, everybody else pretty much in this lineup is short, aside from Quinton Araya, so I mean, if he jumps in, it's gonna be interesting to see him next to the, all the other top guys who are all, you know, much shorter men, and uh, Beef Stew, I mean, this guy's gonna be massive, he's gonna be shredded, and I think last year it was very close between him and Tonio. Tonio deserved it, but Beef Stew was amazing. So I think this year he's probably not winning the New York Pro, but it's going to be very interesting to see him against these top guys. Then we also maybe, maybe got Good Vito doing the New York Pro, which I think would make things so much more interesting. Another shorter guy with a whole bunch of muscle and freaking amazing conditioning, I mean, this guy was criticized for being an Instagram bodybuilder, for not being conditioned on stage, which was true, back when he was an amateur, but in his pro league days, he came in peeled this year, shredded, I mean, he is coached by Chris Asito, so what would you expect, he's shredded, he is massive, he has some real killer shots, so if he enters... He could truly challenge Tony Hubert and Martin Fitzwater, even though these guys beat him already, it doesn't mean that they are much, much better, I mean, they are very close, if you ask me, and if we have, like, a different judging panel, and maybe these guys come in a little bit improved, or a bit worse, things can change, things can definitely shift, and once again, if Nick Walker comes in off for some reason, this guy is definitely a potential candidate to win the New York Pro. There are also another like five guys who are doing the New York Pro who are also very known, very famous and very good bodybuilders, but yeah, they're not winning the show, they're not defeating Nick Walker, they're not placing in top three. So in this video, I'm focusing only on the potential top three, and as far as the winner, once again, it's most likely gonna be Nick Walker, and it's gonna be probably by far the best Nick Walker we ever saw so far. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that, and as far as the other guys, even though I don't think anybody can probably beat him, I think it's going to be very interesting to see all these guys in one callout, in one lineup, it's going to be a stacked show, and actually, maybe somebody else jumps in, who knows, you never know what maybe Andrew Jack is doing, or Hunter Labrada, or Nexilla, maybe, maybe Crisio, maybe these guys are actually planning on jumping in when nobody is expecting, because the lineup keeps getting deeper and deeper every week so far, and still, still, Nick Walker is by far leading, he's at the top, let's hope everything goes well for him, and we see 
the best version of Nick Walker on that New York Pro stage. Tell me, guys, down below in the comment section, what do you think about Nick Walker or the chances of anybody else beating him at this show? And if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content about bodybuilding, just please click that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.